AMA Toyota Motocross Championship presented by FMF. Goes a mile high here for the Toyota Trucks Thunder Valley National out here in the Denver area. Hello and welcome everyone to Lakewood, Colorado. As we move into the second half of the season, I'm Brian Drever along with David Pingree in the booth, Aaron Bates down on the racetrack. And fans have come from all over the place to enjoy motocross racing here in Colorado. Beautiful scenic area, a little hot out on the west coast, not too bad here. I'll tell you what, this is one of the, uh, the, the best settings for a national. The track's completely on the side of a hill, great for spectating. Uh, it looks like such a blast to ride. The first thing when I saw it, I just wanted to get on a bike and get out there. Uh, you got so many cool things around here, the Red Rocks Amphitheater, uh, the mountains right here, Vail, all these great ski resorts. And, and uh, right at the base of those mountains, here we are with uh, an amazing national track. And Ricky Carmichael, the man who has dominated the series, but we welcome back James Bubba Stewart is going to make another appearance here in Toyota Motocross. Starting off the season on the right foot, James Stewart has had a roller coaster season from that point on with a lot of ups, but yet a lot of downs. And devoted to his fans, the promoters, and his team, he's wanting to make a comeback here this weekend, making your debut. James, obviously the championship is out of reach at this point. Why the decision to come back here at Lakewood? Uh, you know, I just wanted to come out for these guys, you know, uh, and then they pay money to come see his race and, you know, my team and, you know, everybody, you know, I just, uh, if I can ride, I just want to come out here and ride and just give them a good show, and uh, that's what I'm here for this weekend. You got a lot of fans cheering you on, devoted fans at that. Good luck to you today. Keep it on two wheels. Thank you. Always good to see James back as we take a look at the standings here. The uh, AMA Motocross title is pretty much Ricky Carmichael's to lose at this point. Chad Reed in second position, James back in eighth. I think I saw a guy actually handing posters out for James. Here's Ernesto Fonseca. We welcome him making an appearance at the motocross tour. Uh, I'm doing awesome. I'm glad to be out here at the track and uh, can't thank everybody enough, you know, for what they've done for me. I mean, it's been amazing. I, uh, we've gotten, you know, a lot of support from everyone. Uh, people, regular fans, you know, people around the sport. Uh, Tony, my agent, has been amazing. My wife, too. I mean, it's been great, you know. I, I uh, you know, after the after the injury and the accident, I I really, it's hard to it's hard to believe how how many people you know know you and, and care about you. Well, it's always great to see Ernie out, and as Ricky Carmichael takes some practice laps here, uh, Ernie Fonseca will be right on hand. James Bubba Stewart seems to come back with the same speed that he left with, uh, almost as if nothing ever happened. Well, you don't lose that skill just by taking a couple weeks off, but, but he is going to lose a little bit of that polish. Maybe he'll be a little rusty, a couple mistakes, the fitness. Uh, it's tough to, uh, to maintain when you're not riding and training on a regular basis. So it'll be interesting to see what he's got today. Again, he came back and, and uh, won a moto at Southwick after being, uh, you know, smashed into the ground a week earlier. So this kid can do amazing things, that's for sure. Carmichael, fastest in practice, but Mike Brown is here. No, I'm just having problems on my bike, you know, uh, just different things every week, you know, breaking the way I ride, and, um, you know, I'm, I'd rather be out finishing races than tearing stuff up, you know, every week it's been something, and I haven't finished the last, I think, four races, and, you know, I think the best thing is to get on the 450. So we welcome Mike Brown to that 450, and uh, how's he going to do? Well, he should do great. He's a great rider, and, and uh, the 450 will suit him just fine. Uh, but I wonder how Chad Reed's going to do after that knee injury that he had uh, at Unadilla. Well, Chad is second in the points championship and always willing to fight the good fight. You know, I went for an MRI this week and, uh, you know, I told my MCL. So uh, it's life. There's uh, nothing really I can do. They don't do surgery on it these days. So uh, basically suck it up. Just kind of like my shoulder injury, you know, and uh, just try to keep it on the pegs. Well, it's tough when a track gets rutted and you've got bad knees. I've had mine. Uh, twisted around backwards more than once and uh, you, you've really got to watch your toes if they start pointing out and you come into a rut they'll tear your foot right off and twist your knee how about the track here at denver they've done a lot of work to thunder valley motocross park to get it ready for an ama national david uh, claybaugh and his crew working hard now they brought in so much sand and soil and mixed it up they got mark barnett building the track uh, and he obviously knows what he's doing he's been doing it a long time and one of the best at it. So this track is amazing. It's ready to go. Here's our starting lineup as we take a look at all the names. And we've seen some of the faces who will uh, head out on to the Thunder Valley track when the gate drops. Uh, any thoughts about this Denver round as we move to the second half of the season? 
a lot of people didn't think this track was ready for a national a couple years ago, but uh, with the effort they've put in now, it's, it's one of the best on the series. Gate drops, and no Ricky Carmichael, no evidence of James Stewart either. Davey Millsaps, who's been on the podium uh, virtually every time here in his debut season on the big bikes, gets it. So the number 118 is out in front, and both Carmichael and Stewart buried kind of mid-pack. What a great start by Millsaps, Chad Reed in second. I think that's three whole shots in a row for Millsaps, so he's done something different with his starts. He was never known as a quick starter, but he's got them figured out now. So Millsaps out in front right now, and instead it is the number 26, Michael Byrne, not Reed, Byrne on the number 26 machine in second position. He loses the spot, and diving through on the inside, we've got a new second place rider. That's Kevin Windham in second. Looks like he's going moose hunting or something with that bright orange gear. Yeah, well, you won't have any trouble picking him out as the number 26 burn slides back into third position. Carmichael, there he is, about sixth, maybe seventh. James Bubba Stewart not too far behind him. He's got about three riders between himself and Stewart, so uh, I imagine these two would work their way to the front, and, and uh, we'll see how James is looking and feeling here after his little break and his uh, couple of crashes. Carmichael runs past the number 442, Justin Mace. David Millsaps, Davies out in front right now. And uh, it is Kevin Winda, K-Dub gets a good start. So a rider who use, who has been getting good starts continues to do so. Kevin Windham talking about his starts being not that good has uh, found the way to get out of there in a hurry. And they said they made some changes to the gearing on their bike that uh, made all the difference for him. And uh, it was a pretty drastic change, four or five teeth on the rear sprocket. So, uh, just changed maybe how the bike was pulling right out of the gate or when he had to shift. And whatever the change was they made, it's definitely working for him. Travis Preston also running among the leaders. Here comes Ricky Carmichael. He's already earned a few spots here in the opening lap at Thunder Valley. So Ricky Carmichael headed towards the front after not the best of starts. Word is that he might have bumped the gate just a little bit uh, as he tried to take off. Yeah, I think he may have just uh, flinched a little, then hit the brakes, and then, you know, when that happens, Inevitably, as soon as you grab the brakes, then the gate drops. So uh, you've got to be real patient waiting for that thing to fall. And Ricky's usually the man at doing that, but I guess you can't win them all. Can't be perfect all the time. So Ricky Carmichael heading towards the front right now, picking off riders one at a time as he heads in that direction. He's working on the number 15, Timmy Ferry, right now on the Honda CRF 450. And Ferry, perhaps inevitably, is going to lose that number five position. Carmichael is flying. No signs of James Stewart just yet. Carmichael around the number 15 of, of Ferry. So now he's into fifth position. And this early in the race, it's not as far forward to each rider. Well, this track definitely favors a guy like Ricky Carmichael. It's, first of all, you're at elevations over 5,000 feet. And when you're coming off an entire season of Supercross racing, you're already halfway through the Nationals, what becomes really critical is recovery. Every week after the races, guys are flying home, spending time on, time on airplanes, you're dehydrated. It's really hard to recover and be ready for the next round. You come here, this track is at elevation. It's very hard to breathe. Uh, your body's already beat up from the whole season. This is one of the roughest tracks on the circuit, so very, very physically demanding. Carmichael working on Travis Preston for fourth position right now. Talk about what altitude does to the machines. Problems with overheating, uh, perhaps even fuel uh, fuel boil and stuff like that. I mean, so the mechanics have to make adjustments just as the riders do. Yeah, it's also, uh, it's also I would say, the toughest race of the year mechanically. Uh, the bikes definitely have a, a an issue with the fuel boiling. Wow, Carmichael passed two riders up into third position as he takes Michael Byrne and the number 11, Travis Preston. So he's up onto the podium here real early in the race. And yeah, the bikes are a little slower at altitude and the riders too. That's right, when you can't get as much air into the bike, you also can't feed it as much fuel. Guys are having to lean their bikes way out for this round and uh, the bikes are noticeably slower up here. Davey Millsap still holding on to the front position, the 18-year-old on that factory Honda with a great start. Only Kevin Windham for company on another Honda, but here comes Ricky Carmichael. He's made short work of four or five riders in front of him off the start, and uh, now he's heading towards the leaders, but there's a ways to go. We'll be right back with more here from Thunder Valley. Take a look at our Toyota leaderboard. It is Stewart back at sixth. 
James Bubba Stewart a little bit uh, further back. He's trying to work his way up through the field as well. He's following Ricky to the front, though. He's, he seems to have Ricky's pace. He's right there. Uh, be interesting to see, though, how long he can last. He hasn't been able to ride and train and do the things that he's used to doing on a regular basis to keep him uh, in shape. He's heading up towards Timmy Ferry right now and also to Michael Byrne. He's got Ferry. Here's Byrne. Byrne just in front of him. Ricky Carmichael showing great speed to get to the front. And let's see if James Stewart can get up there to challenge along with Carmichael. It's always fun to watch those two battle no matter what position it is. I think I just saw James make a pass on Tim Ferry while he was pulling a tear off going around a turn. I don't, I don't know how many people can actually pull that off. Well, you can count them on one hand and probably have fingers left over. You can chop half your fingers off and still count them on one hand, I think. <laughs> Here comes James Stewart. On the number 26, Michael Byrne, fellow Kawasaki rider. Stewart around the outside, tries to drive back in and uh, get a run at him. Way around the outside, carrying speed up the hill. James Stewart, uh, fitness not a problem early in the race, but you're saying it might be later? Yeah, definitely. One of the big things you got to do as he makes a pass on Byrne here, works his way up. Uh, one of the key things about racing is being able to breathe, take deep breaths, keep your heart rate down. And what's going to happen to these guys up here at altitude as we see Justin Buckaloo punched over. Yeah, well, not feeling the best as he uh, sits there in the dirt right now. Probably took a long, hard hit, and his air went somewhere else. Davey Millsap still your leader, riding flawlessly up front. Uh, Kevin Windham can't, can't do anything with him, at least not yet. Millsap's looking good. Well, these guys get 20, 15, 20 minutes into the moto, and uh, they're starting to get a little tired. They'll go to take deep breaths to sort of try to recover and just reset themselves, and the oxygen just isn't there. They're not getting enough air as what they're used to getting, so... Uh, that'll definitely affect these guys later on. Oh, problems for Timmy Ferry as well. Stalled the bike, and we know how hard they are to get started again. He does get it running and uh, up and going, but once those bikes get hot and stalled, it seems as though it takes a, a few kicks, if not more, to get them going again. Millsaps, then Windham. Still the order, 1-2. Ricky Carmichael getting into third position rather quickly, and now he's not far behind Windham, who's second. I think this is the longest Millsaps has led a moto, too, so this has got to be good for his confidence. Uh, I'm sure he can see Ricky coming, but uh, I don't think he's got any ideas that he's going to beat Ricky right now just yet. But the longer he can lead and the more comfortable he can get running up front, that's going to pay off for him down the road when, uh, when he is a threat and a contender to win this class. Well, to resist the urge to succumb to the pressure, the longer he can do that, and the longer you can do that, the better off you are. But here comes Ricky Carmichael, just relentless in his pursuit of the leaders. He's got Kevin Windham in his sights right now. Let's see how long K-Dub can hold off the number four, Makita Suzuki. You watch these guys. I mean, there's not any point on this track where their suspension isn't moving. This track's so rough. It's constantly going uphill or downhill. And some of this elevation, it's hard to get a, a feel for it on television. But this is on the side of a hill. Everything is either up, uphill, downhill, or off camber. Or, Know, running across the hill, so uh, this track doesn't give you any chance to rest. I mean, you can see all the bumps all the way around the turn, so tough track. Kevin Windham holding off Carmichael in a turn or a section that he favors and uh, was able to make passes in before. Now they're kind of in a one-line part of the racetrack. Carmichael's going to have to be patient here, look for an opportunity. Doesn't want to cross wheels with Windham and run a chance of uh, running into him. Flattens that one out nice, gets the drive, gets the wheels down on the ground, and makes the pass on Kevin Windham for second. Textbook and beautiful. Head towards Millsaps now, and gaining on him rapidly, using some patient moves to get around Kevin Windham now. He can study the number 118 Honda in front of him. Carmichael's the best at being prepared. You know, he'll, he'll study tapes from last year and say, all right, what was this track like? It had deep ruts, it had this and it had that. He'll go find a practice track that's got that and, uh, and work on that stuff specifically to be ready for every weekend. And uh, you know, they say luck favors the prepared, and uh, it's definitely Ricky. Although, I'd like to tell you that's a timeless Nietzsche quote that I've committed to memory. I think I actually got that from The Incredibles, the animated film. That's impressive. Davey Millsap still holding on to the front position. Ricky Carmichael trying to uh, patiently get up there to the young 18-year-old Millsaps. Here's that corner 
where we've seen him have some success, but still no move on Millsaps. Millsaps doing a great job of holding him off, and Carmichael has to be patient. Can't work that bike too hard, nor himself. The altitude will magnify uh, any any impatience you might have. Well, you start over revving these bikes, and, and, and they, they don't like that to begin with. They're very uh, low RPM bikes, and you want to short shift them and keep the RPMs down, use the torque. But the more you rev them, the hotter they'll get, and the quicker that fuel will boil. Because even though they use a high temperature tape, uh, underneath the tank and the big radiators, vented front number plates to try to get more airflow through there. The carburetor is still sitting uh, just on top of the cases and just behind the cylinder and head, so there's a lot of heat coming by there. And, uh, and like we said, if you start to, to boil your fuel, uh, your bike will just start running terrible and then stop running altogether. Here's that section where Carmichael is so good. He gets up alongside Millsaps on the inside. He's so good at getting the wheels on the ground. He's able to drive off the corners a little quicker. And just like that, Ricky Carmichael is in the lead. Davey Millsaps now uh, probably affected somewhat by the quick, rather ruthless pass. Although there was no contact, Carmichael didn't hesitate to go around. Goes for the tear off. Maybe he doesn't have one. He's wiping his face in the air. He's actually got roll-offs on, which is a surprise to me. I don't know if he's had some uh, troubles with running out of tear-offs. We saw him at, at Sacramento. It was a little bit muddy. He had to pull his goggles off, so maybe he's just trying to avoid that. But he actually pulled the roll-off string a few times and then took his hand and wiped above and below it to try to get a clear clear vision across his whole goggles. And here we get our first look at Chad Reed, who's battling for fifth with Michael Byrne. Well, well Reed Passing. having some trouble in the field coming up, takes the spot. Now Chad Reed on the number 22, second in the championships, fifth on the track. And with that, we'll take a short commercial break here. The order is set. There's our Toyota leaderboard, and Stewart is fourth. Ricky Carmichael. Well, they say the a basic premise of racing is that the most important turn on the track is the one before the longest straightaway. Also applies to a turn before a hill and uh, particularly when it's sandy dirt where you can't get a lot of acceleration. Here you see a tight right-handed rut Ricky Carmichael's going through, very sandy and uphill coming out of that corner. So the more momentum you can carry through the turn, the better off you're going to be. Now, you don't want to fly in too fast. You can see Ricky Carmichael very patient, make sure he's in the rut, and then starts accelerating and carries momentum out of the turn and up the hill and uses that uh, acceleration to carry him to the top of the hill quicker rather than trying to accelerate in the sand. Ricky Carmichael seems to have learned a little something from our riding tip because he's done everything exactly right here at Thunder Valley again. He's in the lead, and now we're watching uh, a little bit deeper in the field. Battle for third position now as James Stewart is up behind Kevin Windham. Ahead of him, it's Millsaps and Carmichael. I like that lineup both of those guys are using. It looks like they're jumping over the corner marker, but they're landing just right on the edge of it. Stewart still trying to find a way around the number 14 Honda. He's around the outside. Can he hold on to it? Left-hander, he's going to have position, and he's very close to Millsaps just like that. One Honda down, one to go. Stewart rolling already, maybe taking a little bit of time. Bad start, didn't get, get as quickly to the front as did Carmichael, but he's certainly headed in the same direction. Stewart behind Millsaps, second place at issue here. Millsaps held off Carmichael for quite a while. How long can he hold off James Stewart? So far, so good. Stewart pulls up alongside, gets the wheels on the ground, in position in the rut. Millsaps crosses back behind him, but Stewart's too much drive. Hey, same turn he passed uh, Timmy Ferry earlier. He passes Millsaps, pulls the tear off again while he's turning on the gas. Now the question is, does James Stewart have enough speed to catch Ricky Carmichael or even challenge for the lead? Millsap's not giving up, tries to cross back inside, but Stewart holds the spot. You know, everyone in Stewart's camp was saying he's not particularly coming here with uh, a winning mindset. He wants to come out and try to work himself back into the pace, uh, help continue to develop that Kawasaki 450 that he's on. And, um, he realizes he's out of the championship chase. He doesn't want to come and have another crash and, and another bad weekend. So. I think for him at this point, he just wants to be consistent, put in a good solid ride, and, and continue to work throughout the rest of the season to uh, improve himself and the bike. Millsap's not given up on James Stewart, and while he might have earned a measure of confidence from leading this race longer than any he has before, he's probably also got to be feeling pretty good about taking it to Stewart in traffic the way he's doing. James has had to come up from the back, so he's had to ride maybe a little bit harder than Davey has, but. 
31. Jason Thomas out of Florida going a lap down to the leader and now to the battle for second. He's doing a pretty good job too. Look how deep that rut is right there. Those guys are having to lift their leg all the way up by the handlebars to not hang it up in that rut. And Jeff Gibson out of Ohio on a Honda also having problems there holding off the leaders, trying to find a way to let them get by. Chad Reed has stalled the bike. So the number 22, second in the championship, parked in the middle of the course. Kick, kick, kick. Carmichael looking good out front. And Reed having a frustrating day here. Goes for a tear off just to get a few seconds rest. Final lap for Ricky Carmichael, and uh, it looks like another moto win. Ricky's amazing. Like I said, this is uh, his kind of track. And, uh, he's got Barnett building all of his, his tracks at home, so maybe there's some similarities in the way they prep it and, and the different things that Barnett does to really make the track difficult. Ricky Carmichael having one last look back to see if anybody's really there, and the answer is nobody in sight. Chad Reed is really going to have a problem. This helps Carmichael in the championship. James Stewart coming in behind. Ricky Carmichael enjoying some refreshment after a hot moto here at altitude as we take a look at our Suzuki Moto results. Carmichael Stewart, 1-2. That doesn't begin to tell the story. Davey Millsaps in third position as we look at the remainder of the results. Let's hear from our winners first, Millsaps. Well, I don't know as though I ever expected to see the day where Davey Millsaps once again takes a whole shot on an uphill start. Davey, you've been practicing your starts, obviously. How are you able to master them? I don't know. I go home every weekend and practice starts with Brian and Martine, and, you know, I come out here and get after it. <laughs> Our Racer X hole shot goes to the man who got after it. Millsaps on the number one, one eight, gets the measure of the field, crosses the line, and earns that bonus. Stayed out front for a while, too, didn't he? Well, not yet 100%, but it doesn't seem to matter when you're a warrior like this one. James, once again, giving it your all out there. You've had a pretty rough day today. You said you weren't feeling it this afternoon, but you're out here for your fans. Yeah, you know, I mean, I haven't rode since, you know, Sunday morning the last week. So, uh, you know, it was a little tough on me being up at altitude. And it was cool, though. You know, fans are great out here, and all I can do is my best. You're not at 100%. Where would you say you are at? Uh, not 100%. I just leave it at that. <laughs> His body's taking a beating this season, James Stewart. Well, he took the win here last year and looking to do it again this year. Ricky, off to a bit of a rough start there. It looks like it took you a couple of laps to get your rhythm down. Yeah, you know what happened is some guy hit the gate, and then the gate flinched. And I went, and then I grabbed my brakes, and then it dropped. And uh, I was bummed. I think I had a good start. We really worked hard to uh, focus on that because this, this track with, with the elevation, they're kind of slow. So, uh, you know what? We just uh, got to get up and do it again the next time, you know? Well, as we watch the Colorado River, we want to remind you that nobody does more to protect your right to ride than the American Motorcyclist Association. Every racer on the track's an AMA member, so how about you? Call 1-800-AMA-JOIN or visit amadirectlink.com. The AMA writes riding and racing. And with that, we'll go to, to highlights of our Hitachi Women's Motocross as the riders prepare for the starting gate. Catherine Prum from New Zealand dominated the opening round but then had to sit out with some injury as we take a look at some of the women and the start of this race. Women's Motocross returning here to Thunder Valley. Now, Ooh, big spill yikes. off the start there towards the back of the field. The riders jumping up to get their bikes. No, jumping up to uh, ask if each other are okay. Now what is that? Come on, ladies. This is motocross here. You can't hug each other. Tara Geiger from Puerto Rico out in front right now with the number one points leader and defending champion Jessica Patterson in hot pursuit. And as they negotiate this tough Thunder Valley course, we know that uh, there goes Patterson trying to make a, a pass. And not quite on the number 68, Tara Geiger. So. Tara actually was uh, almost a professional surfer, hung out with a bunch of surfing uh, buddies in Puerto Rico before she got into motocross and nearly went that direction with her life, but clearly can ride a motorcycle fairly well. So oh. some other good action here and uh, hidden down. by the trees. We've got a little bit of a spill on the racetrack there. And as she picks her bike up, it is uh, the number one, Jessica Patterson, allowing Prum to go off unchallenged for the lead. And Prum won the uh, first three motos of this series. 
Uh, before having an injury, having to sit out a little bit, spend some time in a cast, and uh, allow Patterson to take over the points lead, but she got another Moto win today. Moto number two heads out onto the racetrack, and problems for the number 105, Tonda Satchwell, local Colorado rider with a lot of fans on hand. And Leah Cantrell leading with uh, Alicia Nix the number two bike, but Patterson taking over the lead, and once Patterson, Jessica Patterson, gets out front, she's tough to catch, tough to pass. Prum with Alicia Nix going after each other here. Prum uh, not having a success in motor number two that she did in motor number one. Jessica Patterson wins the second race, and Prum finishes second to take the overall here at Thunder Valley. I spent three weeks in cast after Hangtown and uh, broke two bones in my hand and I've never ridden at this altitude before. New Zealand doesn't get much more than 600 foot above sea level so uh, this is a big shock to me in the first moto. I felt like I was going to be sick every lap but I uh, just kept pushing hard and trying to get the win. Well, one of our great Western Bison taking a look at things here as we get ready for race two coming up. Enjoying it, let's go first though to Aaron Bates for a report. When you come to the Mile High City, there's one major factor that you better keep in mind, the altitude. When I asked the mechanics earlier this afternoon, they said this place is a mechanics nightmare. Not only do they have to deal with issues such as jetting, but a lot of guys are dealing with bubbling fuel. One of those guys happened to be Mike Brown, who's in the 450 class this weekend, wasn't expected to be here, but made his return, pulled off bubbling fuel, not the way he wanted to come back. Well, that is a huge issue, and a lot of these teams will uh come up here and actually spend some time testing to get ready, but uh, I caught up with a Honda technician and asked him exactly what the boiling fuel situation was all about, what causes it. And it's not particularly that hot here, it's low 90s, there's hotter nationals than that, but they said the elevation is what does it. it. It actually lowers the air pressure the higher you get in altitude, and anything over 5,000 feet really starts to affect it. Uh, that lowers the boiling temperature of the fuel, and uh, particularly many of these exotic fuels that these race teams are running that might make more power, but they have a lower boiling point. So. That's what happens, These uh, they just get warm and uh, with the elevation lets them boil real quick and as it's squirted into the motor, uh, it comes in there bubbling and clumpy and, and the bike will sputter and pop and uh, eventually quit if it gets hot enough. No problems for Davey Millsaps who bubbles right to the front, but this time he's got Ricky Carmichael for company immediately. Not sure if he got the whole shot, but Millsaps sure enough getting out in front. The uh, the 717 is Kyle Mace. We saw him briefly in the first race, so he seems to have the start dialed here at Mile High Thunder Valley. Another issue with that fuel is uh, when the bike does start to run bad, particularly at the end of the moto, it's very easy to stall it. It's very easy for that bike to quit, and once it does stall, nearly impossible to restart. A lot of these teams uh, stick in their gas cans in coolers full of ice before the races, trying to get the fuel as cool as possible before the races start. Uh, and obviously, like we talked about earlier, with the tape under the tank and uh, vented front number plates, anything they can do to keep that fuel temperature as low as possible when they go to the start line. Well, no problems for Ricky Carmichael here in race number two, but James Bubba Stewart back in 10th position, making up spots, but he certainly did not get the kind of start. He's with Mike Brown now on the number three machine, who did have some problems with fuel boil. And Stewart has got a long way to go if he's going to race with Ricky Carmichael here in moto number two. Definitely got his work cut out for him. He's got Wyndham in front of him. A lot of times it's easier to follow a guy that's going your pace. He'll cut the way through the, the guys in front of you, uh, and you just kind of suck right into his draft and follow him through. So Carmichael, then Millsaps, then Chad Reed. The 26 is burned. Everybody lined up one after the other, and way over here on a different racetrack altogether goes James Stewart looking for new lines and fresh ways to get around. James has always been creative. You see off that jump, he glances over. Just keeping an eye on who's out front, how far back he is, and just how hard he needs to ride to get up to those guys and be in contention for the race win or wherever he wants to be. It's Daniel Sani on the number 86 machine out of California, Honda CR 450, that's on the number 86. Stewart's got him lined up and in the gun sights, but Sani holding him off for the time being as they get into this very deeply rutted part of the racetrack. Sonny had some trouble in the first moto, but this kid is actually uh, was a highly touted amateur. He came in with uh, uh, Ryan Villapoto, Michael LaPaglia, guys like that who were really expected to do well. And he was a little quiet, but he's actually shown a lot of signs of, uh, of brilliance here lately and could be a, a, a win contender here down the road. So Millsaps trying to hold off Reed. Reed second in the championship. 
His problem uh, in moto number one turned out to be not boiling fuel, but a lack thereof, out of gas. I wonder if he rolled his eyes when he got back to the pits and found out he'd been picking that thing for 20 minutes and there was no fuel in it. Has to be a tough way to end a race as Millsap's holding off Reed for the time being. Reed's got to do everything he can to stay even remotely close in second in the championship, and of course he's not really that close even as we speak. But he's awful close to Millsaps, working his way around the outside, trying to drive it up the hill here. Millsaps, again, very impressed with this young Honda rider in his first year on the big bikes. I'll tell you what else is frustrating is running an entire moto, uh, only to DNF with you know a lap or two to go. Reed's used all that energy, racing all moto long, and made no points. Well, it's going to be tough. It certainly gives him a hit in the championship, but Carmichael seems to be able to dominate no matter what happens to his opposition. He's out front again, did it early, and this time a much better start than uh, the first time around. James Stewart still rolling towards the front, coming up behind the number 11, Travis Preston, right now for position. That would be seventh just in front of him. Usually we see James cut through the pack a little quicker than this. I mean, I think he's, like like he said, he's, he's still not 100%. He's uh, going to work himself back into that. But normally, he gets a start like this. He's up into first or second within a lap or two. So taking his time a little bit, which I think is smart. He's had a couple of really hard crashes the last month or two. And uh, there's no need to, to force the issue at this point. So right now, James Stewart working on Kevin Windham, who had a much better first moto than he is right now. Windham with a good start the first time around and not so good here. But James Stewart working his way carefully up to each and every rider before he finds a way around. Stewart looking for some traction out there in the dry stuff. Managed to lose quite a bit of drive that time. Still recovers nicely. And goes inside on Kevin Windham. Does he pick oh. up the spot? Yes, he does. Now he's looking for more at the number 11 of Travis Preston. He crossed over right in front of Windham there. Windham just about clipped his rear wheel and went down. So it is the number 11 of Preston and the number 26 Kawasaki of Michael Byrne in front of him. And James Stewart making up spots in a hurry here, but still trying to be patient in doing so. Doesn't want to tip over again. This is the time of the year also where all the new, all the gear companies coming out with their new clothing lines. James obviously running the new Fox stuff. Kevin running some of that new orange no fear gear. So it's kind of like a whole new round of the series here in Colorado. James Stewart's mechanic looking on here as they come up behind the number 26. Mike Byrne also on a Kawasaki. So Stewart with the red gear and the green bike. Burn on a Kawasaki with blue gear. Kind of a mixed uh, mixed bag here as they even change outfits, if you want to call it that, between motos. He rode right, right, right around the outside of Burn in that turn. Never even put his foot down. It's the kind of stuff that uh, makes this guy the next big thing. Our Toyota leaderboard. Carmichael's out front. Continues here watching James Stewart up to fifth as we went to commercial break. And the gaps are a little larger in front of him right now. He is getting close to Timmy Ferry on the number 15 machine. Ferry running in fourth spot. So Stewart heading towards the podium right now, but whether there are enough laps remaining and enough time to get there remains to be seen. We talk about this every weekend, but this is really where fitness is going to really start to affect these guys. Late in the second moto, track is absolutely beat up, rutted, rough. Now here, you're at elevation, like we talk about, you're late in the season. Uh, the guys that are fit, prepared, fully recovered coming into the weekend, those are the guys that are going to shine uh, as we appropriately cut to Ricky Carmichael, who is checked out. Shining like no other, Ricky Carmichael, Chad Reed on the number 22 machine, up behind Davey Millsap, still battling for second position behind Carmichael some distance as they go through the mechanics area. Always love to watch the mechanics. They get so... So, so animated over there because what can they do besides stand there and cheer? No, at this point, they've done all their work. That's, uh, that's about all they can do is wave a rag and scribble some stuff down on a pit board that a lot of times you can't read. Chad Reed in third spot. Millsaps holding on for another podium position here. Very consistent through the course of the season. And... Uh, 
All those pit oh. boards out there just a little long. Reed has to duck under. Was that his own pit board he had to duck under? It was his own, but Millsap's mechanic had his out there, so I don't think uh, I don't think his mechanic could see how close Chad was getting, and I don't think Chad saw his pit board behind Davies until uh, he just about smacked it with his visor. So Reed still trying to work on 18-year-old Davy Millsaps on the 1-1-8 Honda. You have the Suzuki of Carmichael up front, the Honda of Millsap second, the Yamaha of Reed third. One thing we can assure you of is there's great parity among the manufacturers in motocross racing. Now, there was an issue earlier where a, a mechanic hit a rider with a pit board and was fined for it. Or what happens if you hit your own rider? Or if that's legal. Mike Brown back in ninth position, not sure if he's still having a fuel problem or just adjusting to the bigger bike, making the switch to the motocross class for the rest of the season out of the lights division. Well, brown has got good speed. I think it just may take him a, a week or two to adjust to the big bike. They're going to have to fine tune that thing. And you know, these other guys have had all year to get their bikes working right, handling right, gearing set up, things like that. So brown has got a few bugs he's going to have to work out. But Shoot, this may, may work out even better for him than riding the lights bike. A top 10 finish with all the circumstances here. Altitude and a very, very tough track. Brownie could take a measure of satisfaction in that. Here's Daniel Sani is behind him in 10. This is a, an impressive ride for Sani. He was a, we talked about a big amateur rider coming in, but then was kind of kind of went quiet, didn't hear a whole lot about him. And here he is running top 10 at, uh, at a national in the motocross class. Uh, it's no small accomplishment, so. His sponsors, this guy's got to be real happy, and this has to be a big boost of confidence for him. Daniel Sani on the Unbound Energy Honda CRF450, also an 18-year-old, as is our current second-place man, Davey Millsap, similarly on a Honda. So watching Sani here, carrying some nice lines around the track. Nobody really to race with at the moment. He's put those behind him, far behind. You know, as a young kid like this, usually you're in the lights class. So for him to jump up and just be running with these, uh, you know, the biggest stars in the sport, that'd be a little intimidating. He seems like uh, it's not bothering him at all. Ricky Carmichael looking smooth in spite of the very rough and rutted up track. This uh, Thunder Valley motocross course has gotten pretty well used here by the time motor number two for the big bikes comes along. Get to a track like this that's constantly up, down, ruts, breaking bumps, and chop everywhere. Your suspension setup is critical. You know, I know Ricky finally made a breakthrough at Red Bud with his chassis and suspension setup that he's really happy with. And, uh, that that'll really pay dividends for him here at a track like this today. Only a few lap riders for company. Carmichael on his way to Honda, the company that defines performance in motorcycles, ATVs, personal watercraft, and scooters. James Stewart heading for the podium once again here on the comeback trail. He's got Kevin oh. Winda behind him. A little bit of a bobble there, but no major drama. That could have got ugly in a hurry. And Winda back inside on Stewart. These two battling for third place. Final spot on the podium. Lappers getting out of the way for fourth place. Sorry. And Windham, Stewart. And up in front of them, it's Millsaps and Reed behind Ricky Carmichael. That's the podium right now. You see James sitting a lot more back there a couple turns ago. It's almost, he, he looks exhausted. He looks to me like his arms are, are loose. He doesn't even have a real good grip on the bars, but he's just riding with heart at this point, trying to get that, uh, yeah, I mean, you can see him. He's just, he's shot. So uh, he's just, just trying to hang on at this point. James Stewart in front of Kevin Windham now, and it could be that he's made a pass that'll stick. No, Windham comes by again. So Kevin Windham lighting the crowd up here, racing with James Stewart. And I would have to say you're probably right. Stewart with uh, nothing to answer with that now, as he's going to have to, well, he's fallen quite a ways back and maybe has waved the white flag, even though the real white flag has not quite waved yet. Yeah, he's fried. I felt like that a time or two. I'll tell you what, it's ugly. You just want to pull into the pit so bad. It is the last lap for Ricky Carmichael as he continues pretty much unchallenged here since getting the lead early in the race. So Carmichael with lots of clear track in front of him and uh, polite lappers to get out of the way. Can just ride this one home, take yet another overall, and that's exactly what he's going to do. 
winner of the first moto, winner of moto number two, taking the overall championship here at Thunder Valley. And this cat would just keep going if his gas tank was bigger. He doesn't seem to even get tired. But for Stewart, even though uh, he did kind of bonk there at the end, I think this is a good race for him. He needs to just finish motos at this point. You know, sort of work his way back into to, uh, racing for the lead rather than coming out and trying to get up there and run Ricky's pace the entire moto. It, that hasn't worked out for him so well here in some of these rounds. So I think it's still a good ride for Stewart. And with all due respect to Hannah, to Johnson, to Stanton, and even to uh, McGrath, yeah, greatest of all time, GOAT, hard to argue against Ricky Carmichael, isn't it? Sure is. This guy's broken just about every record, won everything there is to win. Got nothing to prove. He's still out there uh, just killing it. Riding as hard as he can each and every lap of every moto and apparently does not get tired of winning. So Ricky Carmichael earning yet another victory, and this time at Thunder Valley in front of a nice crowd here in the Colorado Mountains. Let's take a look at our Suzuki Moto results. Carmichael, Millsaps, and Reed will stand on the podium. Mike Brown up in ninth, that's good. We got Daniel Sani in 11th, great ride for him as well. Lost a spot there in the last couple of laps as we take a look at all the results. Uh, Carmichael starting the celebration here at Thunder Valley. I saw Nick Wade dropped all the way back to 18th in the results there. Uh, he also had some problems with fitness. He uh, just, just looked like he hit a wall and went backwards. Carmichael taking a little bit of extra time to thank the fans here as we look at our overall results. Carmichael, of course, running a limited schedule. Perhaps Thunder Valley is not on that. So Millsap second, James Stewart third overall. Let's hear first from Millsaps. Well, making a hard charge here at Lakewood, Davey, you had it going on today. What was the difference? I don't know. You know, I got a good start again. Almost got the whole shot. But uh, uh, Cali guy got it from me, and, you know, I just... I rode my own race, and I knew uh, I knew Reedy was back there because I could see Wyndham and Stewart, and you know I rode my own race, and he uh, he has a hurt knee, so I know I can't really do anything about that. Our racer X hole shot goes to the number 717 Kyle Mace. Watch the green bike, blue uniform, just barely, maybe by a wheel, ahead of Millsaps at the white line. It's always impressive to, when a privateer pulls a hole shot and uh, to give him the money. Well, as Ricky Carmichael makes it five consecutive overall wins, Ricky hard charging once again. But you and Davey were going for a pretty good battle there for a little bit. Yeah, we were. Uh, Davey's been riding good. He, uh, I got to give it up to him. He surprised me for sure this year. And uh, good to see he's doing good and uh, making it fun, getting some other guys up there. And uh, today was a good day for me. Made up some good points and a uh, really important day. Really, really happy with the way it turned out. Speaking of important days, I noticed today as you went over the finish line, the last two laps, you're pointing to our man, Ernesto Fonseca, sitting up there cheering you guys on the top of the AMA rig. What was that for? Ah, he's just a great friend. You know, me and Ernie go a long ways back, living with me and uh, giving him heck and, and teaching him all the right things to say, not the wrong things to say when he when he couldn't even speak a lick of English. And uh, what a better place to uh, dedicate a win, man. It, uh, it's awesome. He's been here for a while, for, uh, shoot, like five months now. And I think he gets to go home. So uh, Ernie, it's great to see you, and uh, he's going to be around a long time. Well, as we take a look at some images here from uh, our national at Thunder Valley, any thoughts as we are now well into the second half of the season? Well, Carmichael's definitely taking control of this series with Reed dropping a moto early in the day. Uh, the points lead for Ricky just keeps growing, but it's still fun to come out and watch him ride. He's, he's just amazing to watch. Well, get on your motorcycle and head for Washougal. That's the next round. We will 